Hi guys, another morning, another day on the cold water swim challenge. Doing at least 10 days of cold water exposure uh, in a row, just to harden ourselves up for the winter. Today, I wanted to show you what's inside my winter wild swim day sack, what I'll take with me in these cooler months, everything to get see me through the swim uh, and keep me warm afterwards. First and foremost, a towel. This is really quite a small one, doesn't take up too much space. Um, it's ideal, I find. Some people prefer the bigger ones. The small one packs down really small. Um, that's why I like that. Surf shoes, neoprene shoes. Uh, these, this is ideal. Um, we don't know if there's glass, if there's sharp objects under the water. The last thing you wanna be doing uh, is cutting your feet. There's also a lot of crayfish in this particular lake. I don't personally wanna be standing on crayfish uh, getting nipped. So we got the uh, neoprene shoes as well, pretty invaluable. The flask, this is probably one of the most essential things I take. It's just warming up afterwards, have a hot tea in here. It really helps with stopping your body, the chilling effect after you come out of the water, start drinking the tea. Uh, it really takes the edge off uh, the coldness. Like once you're out of the water, you wanna, you wanna start warming up, you know, in a fairly swift manner. You don't want the, that cold exposure to linger with you as you're walking back to the car, as you're going about your day. Also with that, is the uh, food jar. This is a thermos food jar. Uh, in here I just have generally just something quick and easy I can make in the morning. So this is beans and cheese, just a can of beans, uh, cut up with some cheese, microwave that, then put it in the food jar. <coughs> Again, it's like the flask, getting a drink on, getting uh, some food in. It just really alleviates the, uh, the cold, the after drops say, that you feel uh, after you come out of the water. Also have some, uh, I don't tend to use these. These are more of a, like an exceptional situation where I found myself, maybe I'll push myself a little bit too far. I'm a little bit colder than uh, I was expecting to be. This is a pair of uh, kind of skiing trousers, uh, really thick. So I can even put these over the trousers I'm wearing. There's a pair of the trousers uh, and I also have the jacket. It's quite important to say that these are in, um, you know, individual dry bags. So in the worst case scenario, if this whole bag uh, fell in the water, it's not really going to be an issue because they are in, you know, individual dry bags. So this is an emergency situation. I found myself, uh, you know, extremely cold. I've got the trousers and a, like a ski, ski alpine jacket. I think this is a, a snowboarder's jacket. It was sold as, doesn't really matter. What matters is it's a real thick, warm jacket. I've never used those, I don't believe, after a swim because that's, that's more just an emergency thing to go to if I find myself uh, extremely cold. A knife, this probably isn't the most UK friendly knife. It's a little bit big. It's a Mora, uh, it's a bushcrafted knife, but people fish in this lake. Even if it's a location you go to where people aren't meant to fish, people often do fish places they're not meant to fish. You could have quite substantial fishing line that you're not gonna break with your hands. Some fishermen use wire trace, some people use braid. You're very unlikely to be able to break that with your hands. Now I don't, mm -hmm. I don't swim with this clipped onto me, but even if you can get back to the bank, you can cut all that line off you because you could end up in a situation where you get tangled up that it makes it very, uh, very difficult to move. Some people use the, um, the little ones they keep on them. You can get like a credit card one, like the UK police probably wouldn't be that impressed with this. I mean, you, you have a reasonable explanation of why you're carrying it. If you're on land that you don't really have the right to be on, which you shouldn't really do, but potentially with something like this, if they wanted to throw the book at you, that's armed trespass. So be very careful with the knife you have, especially if you're watching from the UK. Uh, we have quite strict knife laws in this particular country. And then I have just a little pouch of spare GoPro stuff. That's only applicable if you wish to film your adventures, spare batteries, spare SD cards, uh, microphone, etc. In my little, uh, in my little pouch. Finally, uh, a little side pocket. I have the. Uh, spork spoon with a fork on the end. I don't know if that's technically a spork or what you call that. Uh, just, I pretty much only really use the spoon end, um, but that, this is in my bushcrafting. This is, I use this bag for bushcrafting as well. So it's got the fork, it's got the spoon attachment, but I only really need the spoon for the food jar. We're only really fishing out things like beans and stuff like that out the jar. A woolly hat uh, and gloves. I don't tend to really use the hat because I don't tend to uh, get my head wet. I try and avoid that, especially if I'm on my own but the gloves are nice, hands are quite cold. I'm generally carrying like the GoPro, the tripod. I've got a few things in my hand. Um, so hands get quite chilly. 
you can put them in your pocket, but carrying sort of items to film this as well. Uh, so the gloves are pretty good. Merino wool, ideally. These aren't, uh, do have merino wool gloves, but they're in uh, just another bag at the moment. Merino wool, ideal, or any form of wool is ideal, because if it gets wet, it still has good uh, thermal properties. Thick woolen socks are very useful. Once you're out of the water, your feet probably are gonna be slightly damp even if you towel them down. So with the woolen sock, it's really gonna help keep your feet warm much better, say, than a cotton sock. These are British military Arctic socks. Um, I really rate these, but any thick woolen sock is gonna be ideal. A bag, I just literally carry this because the lakes I go to, people do unfortunately throw a lot of rubbish just on the ground. So I have a little bag that I can kind of do my bit, you know, give back, take a little, take a little bit by enjoying this lovely lake and also give a little bit back by picking up any trash that almost certainly is gonna be around. Just looking around me now, I can see a significant amount of rubbish has been thrown on the floor. A torch, unlikely to need it, but basically a torch pretty much always stays in this bag anyway. Uh, I actually have a fire still, that doesn't need to be in here. That's just because I use this bag for bushcrafting as well. And a lighter, pretty much, a lighter is always pretty much on me anyway. You could, I guess in an emergency situation, you could create a little fire if you really needed warmth, but then you're really starting to uh, scrape the bottom of the barrel in terms of, um, getting yourself a situation at that point the light is pretty much just in there because they say this is a bush crafting bag so that's everything i take with me it's nothing above and beyond trunks obviously well i'm about to take a dip now uh, so i'm wearing the, the trunks shorts uh, under my trousers just so i can get to a location like this no messing around trousers off clothes off uh, i tend to lay all my kit out ready for when i come out I don't ever want to get to the point where I can't use my hands or you know you've got confusion uh, early you know the early stages of hypothermia you wouldn't ever want to get to that stage but I just lay my stuff out really neat so like towel and sh like shoes I generally have on the floor then a towel resting on them then the bag lying down like that then my dry clothes and then like the flask and food jar just sitting next to it just so when I get out there's no messing around if you did find yourself confused or your hands are starting to like give up on you it's just easy to grab stuff, dry yourself off, start getting your clothes on. Once you get that food and tea inside you, you're gonna start recovering, in my opinion. So this is day three of the cold water challenge. Gonna do a minimum of 10 days. We'll see how we go. Maybe we'll do more. Weather's quite mild in the UK now. Didn't actually check the weather this morning. It's 10, 11, very mild for December. So we're just gonna do our, our little bit this morning. Five minutes, eight minutes, I don't know. I'll probably time it and I'll let you guys know. But it's, uh, it's a lovely morning down the lake. So I hope you find that useful. You don't need to take a lot. Winter wild swimming, just use your own common sense. Don't push yourself uh, further than you uh, feel comfortable with. I'm gonna jump in the lake now with the dog and I'll, uh, I'll see you in the next video.